general introduction to plant systematics so what is plant systematics and how does it differ from taxonomy so sometimes you can use it interchangeably right mostly these terms are used interchangeably but in strict sense systematics has something to do with evolution evolutionary legacy so the classification based on how organisms evolve so the natural way of evolution you know so based on that you are classifying the organism so if that is the case then it is systematics so early on the taxonomy the traditional taxonomy is classified just because of the look alike if two plants look quite similar then people used to classify it together you know so usually the look wise the similarity of the morphology is because of the shared ancestry so that is why most time they are right you know like linnaeus the swedish uh, you know the the father of the discipline zoology and the father of botany as well right called linnaeus so the way that he classified the plants and even animals is by looking at the morphology so morphology if the morphology is identical that means that almost 99% of time it's because of the shared ancestry but mind that sometime uh, morphology is deceptive you know so because of the convergent evolution you see that is a big problem isn't it so like wings of butterfly and wings of birds and wings of bats everything looks similar to a non specialist but these are different it's entirely different isn't it so wings of butterfly is uh, per se it is not really a wing but it's an appendage isn't it and wings of bat also it's actually a forelimb of a, uh, a vertebrate you know so that is why unless you really know the the uh, how it actually the the deep homology will never be able to distinguish so there are some issues with the taxonomy and that is why nowadays everybody is talking about systematics that is a lot more a better term than usual taxonomy you know so systematicist is uh, the the modern taxonomists are you know so uh, the taxonomy is uh, I mean, the systematics is the systematic taxonomy. That is yet another synonym for that. Uh, it is uh, the study of the evolution of the biological diversity. So biodiversity is nothing but all organisms on the planet Earth, present and past, isn't it? And how these organisms are related with each other. That is how the evolution is all about. So it's all mixed up. All, all these subjects are really uh, mixed up, right? So it is interrelated. And we need to have a holistic picture. So there are at least three sub-disciplines of systematics. Taxonomy means naming and classification of the biodiversity. So naming of a new species, for example, or new taxa. Taxa need not be species, right? It could be genus, family, order, class, even domain, right? So that, that part, part is still we call it as taxonomy, right? And phylogeny is the evolutionary history of an organism. Uh, it is a cornerstone of the branch of biology called systematic taxonomy. So it's basically systematics or systematic taxonomy is all based on the phylogeny. You know, how the organisms are being evolved. And evolution, of course, the population genetics and origin of species. So all these fields are interrelated and that is basically the cornerstone of systematics or systematic botany. So as you can see, the classification and naming are part of the taxonomy, while study of the process of evolution like uh, source of variability and population genetics, hybridization, all these are evolution, while phylogeny is about uh, divergence and development of the groups, more time and place, and even phylogeny and evolution are quite similar. So that's how the, the systematics is. So systematics, in addition, taxonomy also include phylogeny and evolution in it, you know. So classification is very simple, that we are simply classifying into orderly groups, right? So that we do the classification as part of the home inventory, isn't it? Uh, instead of chaotically arranging everything. So it's better to arrange our own home, right? Uh, for example, you open your cupboard, the clothes, how we are uh, neatly arranging our clothes, right? Or the books or stationery, everything, right? Even pantry in the kitchen, Right? So that is classification. So uh, one good example would be uh, you can go to the library and see that how the books are being classified. So that, uh, you know, the, the priority is for fast retrieval of uh, a title, you know. So that is that is what the classification. So classification we need in the uh, biology, right? Biological, the, the, that means the living organism as well as uh, extinct species. We need to classify them. Right, so there is the arrangement is what you call it as the classification, right? 
So, of course, uh, that is an integral aspect of taxonomy. And taxonomists are the scientists that identify and name organisms, right? So, <coughs> uh, like identifying and naming the organism means that it could be already described species or it could be brand new species, new to the science, you know? So, yeah, so that, that is what the taxonomy is all about. So, why do you really want to classify? So, for accurately and uniformly naming the organism, you know? So, we need to have one uh, standard world over because the same thing which what we call it in different different uh, you know uh, what languages could be entirely different so we really need a binomial a nomenclature for that right for the uniformity for the sake of uh, you know simplicity <laughs> and it also prevents a misnomer for example starfish or jellyfish which are not really fish you know and uh, uniform it in the language, Latin or some Greek or for all the names, even Sanskrit. You know, many of the species which I described, seven new species till date in 2007, 2021, right? Till now, I have uh, discovered seven new species. So, some of these species I have chosen Sanskrit, uh, epi, uh, you know, ep, uh, epithets. The second part of the species name is called epithets. Uh, yeah, so for example, Ulva Paschima. Paschima means uh, the west coast of India, you know. So, uh, for example, if you look at here, uh, this particular <coughs> creature, it's skunk in English, but different uh, kind of languages can have different names of it, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so it, could, it can have different names, right? So, you really need a uniformity of all these names. So, that is one a main reason why we need to have classification or a uh, systematicist you know and yes yeah, so latin names are understood by all taxonomy so early on we used to have only latin for biological systematics but now nowadays it, that particular thing is no longer required so it could be of any language but the the names that is the binomial names should follow the latin grammar you know ending the the, the neuter with the neuter or you know so if you are using a feminine uh, genus then it should also have feminine species name the epithet so yes so that is the thing right so we are still following the latin uh, latin what the language rule but the name per se need not be latin you know so that is the thing and why latin you might wonder because the the field of taxonomy is thought to have originated by uh, Linnaeus and Linnaeus is a European, of course, he's a Swedish, and uh, all, all the European languages, most, I would say, most of the European languages the <coughs> can be considered as original from the Latin. So that is why we have Latin in it, you know. So, of course, we have several of these uh, museums where, uh, you know, these are like um, mecca of the taxonomists, you know. Uh, for example, in uh, London, there is a Natural History Museum. Uh, they have large number of herbarium specimen as well as the fossils. You know, so fossils and herbarium uh, preserve. Th these actually serve as the the morphotypes. You know, uh, of any kind of uh, uh, species that we describe. Any kind of names should have some specimen formally attached to it, right? So you need to have either herbarium specimen or formalin specif uh, specimens, you know, especially the, the animals, or fossils. So, everything you can see in the Natural History Museum in uh, London, and in Paris, Nat uh, National Museum of Natural History in Berlin as well, <coughs> so as Royal Museum of Central Africa and Belgium. So, these are some of the big museums in Western Europe. And in the US, it is Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. And unfortunately, in India, we had one uh, you know, uh, museum, National Museum of Natural History, but it has been completely devastated recently, you know, a few years back in a huge conflagration. Uh, that is basically the uh, big fire that has completely damaged all of our specimen. And it is still working on a, uh, you know, on a, a, a makeshift building right now where we don't really have any specimen. I hope it gets better, the situation gets improved here in India. So, you know, many people think this taxonomy or, uh, you know, so this systematics are just boring science. It's just about the classification, but it's not right. This is a very famous quote by Stephen Jay Gould, my favorite author, you know. 
He said, taxonomy, the science of classification, is often undervalued as a glorified form of filing, filing, you know, like in the library. With each species in its prescribed space in an album, but taxonomy is a fundamental and dynamic science dedicated to exploring the causes of relationships and similarities among the organisms, you know. By the way, Gold worked on snail uh, taxonomy and systematics, you know, especially he was a paleontologist, right? So, the causes of the relationship, why did these two forms are related? So, causes means, of course, because of the common ancestry, right? Evolution is the main driving force behind the similarity, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so classifications are the theories about the basis of the natural order. Uh, these are not really dull catalogs compiled only to avoid the chaos, you know. So, his uh, one of my favorite book is The Richness of Life. So, check it out, Stephen J. Gould. And he's a very, uh, you know, uh, the way that he, he writes, the, the prose is really masterly, you know. And coming to the early taxonomies 2000 years back, Aristotle, uh, we, we call him as the first taxonomist because he, at least he started naming plant and animal. Of course, we, we, we don't know that maybe there were earlier taxonomists as well, for sure, right? But we have, as per the records, Aristotle is considered to be the oldest taxonomist. <laughs> Highly contested, I don't believe in it. But yeah, so he subdivided... Uh, I mean, he divided mainly plants and animals and then subdivided based on the habitat, land, sea or air dwellers, you know. Uh, yeah, so and then early taxonomist includes John Ray uh, in the 17th century, a botanist and he was the first person who used Latin for naming, you know. So John Ray's uh, famous book is this, you can see that, uh, you know, Historica Plantarum, right. So, uh, yes. His names were very long descriptions telling everything about the plant. So it, it was not really convenient way of naming. So for example, uh, this particular flower, the flower, you know, the, it's an angiosperm plant, uh, which we now call it as Physalis angulata. In John's race system, it was Physalis amno ramoisime ramis angulosis glabris folis. Dentoceratus, see, it's such a long name. So, Linnaeus, the Carl Linnaeus uh, or Carl Linne is now credited as the founding father of the taxonomy because he is the one who introduced, uh, you know, the, the binomial system of the classification and also he, uh, you know, his entire life was devoted for classifying the, the biological diversity of the planet Earth. You know, so he classified the organism by its structure, animals, plants, and even minerals and beast, <laughs> homo ferus, you know, because uh, in his prevailing times, in his times, so it was a pre-Darwin time, you see, and people were worshippers, right, uh, believers of the God and followers of the religious uh, structures, holy books. And in holy books, you can see about this uh, beast, ghost, and saw all the concept, you know, and that is why he need to have a classification for the beast as well. So yeah, so he he did that as well. And minerals, you see, minerals is abiotic, right? So and still he classified it, and he developed the binomial nomenclature, and also he, of course a father of taxonomy, and he wrote Systema Naturae, that is a, the fa famous, uh, you know, contribution of Carl Linnaeus. So. A fun fact is that, of course, he, you know, he was a narcissist in one sense. Psychologically, narcissism means extreme self-love, you know. So, leisure time, penning long and flattering portrait of himself and declaring that there had never been a greater botanist or zoologist. <laughs> and that his system of classification is, was the greatest achievement in the realm of science. Look at that. Self-praising, right? And he modestly suggested that his grave's Gravestone should bear the inscription Principus Botanicorum in Latin. That means Prince of Botanists. Yes, we still have it. So this is his actually, you know, the, the gravestone, right? In Uppsala, right? So I have been there in, uh, in Sweden a few years back, right? 
and yes yeah, so he he a lot of fun facts so check it out very interesting facts like uh, he you know uh, his preoccupation with sex right many of the uh, things that he the organisms that he named has got explicit inferences uh, references to sexual organs for example vulva labia pubis anus and hymen many of this uh, you know hymena for example uh, you know clitoria ternacea have you heard this uh, it's a famous uh, you know the shankapushpi right or shank shankapushpa right the sanskrit it's clitoria ternacea and why it is clitoria the genus it's a linnaean genus because of its external similarity with female reproductive organ you know so yeah so that preoccupation with sex is another fun fact of this uh, lineage and he grew plants by the nature of the reproductive organs and endowed them with arrestingly anthropomorphic amorousness and his descriptions of flowers and their behaviors are full of references to promiscuous intercourse barren uh, concubines and bridal bed and so on check out it's a very interesting book called bill uh, you know short history of nearly everything by bill bryson uh, any student of science it's immaterial you're a phd student or a bsc or msc or mtech mbbs please do check it out this is a fantastic book no uh, it's my number one recommendation for the school children of today. So, by the way, uh, you know, in sciences, you know, uh, these are not a problem, right? So, the idea of naming a, an organism is that it should somehow aid in identify, identifying. So, in that sense, what Linnaeus did is, uh, you know, ethical, isn't it? For example, the Clitoria ternacea. Or other genera, of course, it is kind of extreme. Fornicata, vulva, all these are basically, you know, the, the Linnaean genus. And for scientists, there is nothing obscene than scientific misconduct. You know, these are not really obscene. Right? Scientific misconduct means plagiarism or data manipulation, ima image manipulation, you know, ghost writing. That means that somebody else is writing your thesis by paying them the money. All these are... The scientific misconduct and these are the obscenity in science these are not obscenity right and yes uh, you know so for example uh, yes so uh, yes i have actually described several of species so this is some of the media coverage and also we have uh, uh, you know in uh, near near uh, by there is a university called punjabi university there is another famous taxonomist over there himendar bharati uh, he will he's working on ant systematic so some of this news uh, has come up you know so this is uh, this is by the punjabi university's uh, you know the the peer panjal ant isn't it so linnaean society is uh, it's a very famous society of london that is most renowned for the taxonomy so in, uh, they publish two books zoological journal of linnaean society and botanical journal and uh, yes binomial nomenclature is uh, one of the key contribution of Linnaeus, right? So, binomen, as the name say, the two names, binomen, right? So, name of the species, I mean, genus followed by the species, that is the binomen name. So, genus, G, the whatever the genus name should have capital, but species name should not have, there should be a space in between, it should be italicized when in print, but when you are writing on a piece of paper with your, with your own handwriting, it should be underlined. That are very, very common rules, but many people, many students <laughs> don't follow it. For example, when they're presenting their even PhD synopsis seminar or even the, the, the final PhD, I've seen it. They are not italicizing, which is you have to be very careful, you know. So this is the right way to write uh, the, the binomial name, Pavo Cristatus, the, you know, the peacock. P in capital, C should not be in capital. And there should be a space in between and italicize. That's it. And usually it is Latin or Greek, but nowadays it is tolerated. Any name should be okay, but it should be in a, uh, the it should follow the Latin uh, nomenclatural standards. That is a grammar, you know. And yes, so intraspecific or infraspecific. That means inside the species, whatever whatever is the groups, uh, should uh, you know we usually have it in three parts. That that kind of names, you know. For example, Caligistigia sipium subspecies americana the american hedge uh, bindweed so this is basically a subspecies 
you know so we can use appropriate abbreviation for it for example subspecies or var dot means variety f dot means form you know for example cyclamen heterifolium f dot albiflorum that means white flowered form of ivy leaved uh, cyclamen right so that way you can have a, a trinomen as well but for zoological nomenclature it's usually trinomen you know three parts right uh, ratus 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 right three names it has got for the rat common rat uh, for example anthus hotsoni berezovsky olive back pipit right so all these have got three parts for the binomial uh, for zoology it is usually trinomial but for a human being for example homo sapiens only two names right so it can be trinomial as well that is the point here and specific names are not specific that's very very important for example all these names uh, all these uh, binomials uh, binomial means binomial name or uh, scientific names you know have got the last part second part that is species name by color does it mean that all these have the same ancestor no you know so genus name these are all different different genus so species name commonality makes no sense it doesn't have any uh, shared ancestry okay so don't get confused here by color means it has got two colors you know that species usually appear in two kinds of forms each with its own color so some of these are plants some of these are animals some of these are fungi some of these are bacteria doesn't matter by color it's it's not specific but genus name is usually specific right and informal binomials there is a third part as well the authority you know authority is the one who uh, described the species that means the, who, the one who discovered the species and described for the first time in the world right so authority is usually written as an abbreviation for well-known taxonomist for example homo sapiens l dot so that's l means lineus right so yes so since uh, lineus was the first person to name many plant species like uh, osimum tenui florum l you know or ficus bengalens is the national tree of india that is also by lineus so we usually abbreviate it by l dot you know so that way we can do it or Ulva Paschima Bast, <laughs> because my name is Felix Bast, so Bast is my surname. So the one who first describe, uh, you know, so that in that sense that the name, if you describe a new species, then, uh, you know, you are, you are etching your name with that species name forever. Nobody can change that name. So even after your death, thousands of years, you know, forever, you can say forever. So it is one way to, uh, you know, to live forever, isn't it? Uh, is by describing a new species, you know. So, but remember that there are no authorities in science, in strict sense, you know. So taxonomic authority doesn't mean that that person is responsible for everything to do with that species. No. Authority just means that the person who first described that species, you know. So in science... It's open for criticism from anyone. For example, even Nobel Prize winners can be criticized by a school student. And of course, the Nobel Prize winners will be more than happy to listen to that. So that is how the science progresses, you know, uh, by falsifiability of Karl Popper, looking for the proof for disconfirmation. You know, that is how the science progresses, right? So taxonomic authority is technically uh, the, the first person who described the text taxa. So she or he may not be necessarily be a knowledge authority or the last word. So many other people will be working. For example, Ulva Paschima, I described and I became the taxonomic authority. But that doesn't mean that I know everything about that uh, Ulva Paschima. There might be a, a new student later, later on who do a lot of work on it and find an anti-cancer potential or whatever be, you know. And then, uh, you know, he, he wins a Nobel Prize. I don't have any authority to share the Nobel Prize, he or she, of course, right? Yes, yeah, so the authority don't get confused, okay? And yes, yeah, so as I told you, uh, yeah, so if you look at here, the binomial nomenclature will give it some clue on which two species are more related, you know? So for example, here, uh, grizzly and brown bear, these two are uh, thing, right? Just by look alike or just by this color, 
you cannot say that these two are more related isn't it so but if you look at that the you know the the nomenclature the binomial nomenclature it becomes very clear this is Aeluropoda is a genus but these two are of the same genus Ursus right so these two are more related because it say it, it belongs to the same genus right yes yes so the polar bear is Ursus maritimus recently it came in news in uh, in, in Norway you know they they hunted right? they killed it because it becomes uh, yeah it, it, it start attacking the some some of the uh, you know some of the uh, you know the the, the uh, maritime workers so it's kind of you know very very sad news isn't it so yeah this is just a picture which uh, you know which which made me so sad recently a few years back yes so which two are related if if i ask you ulva indica ficus indica and ulva japonica of course the species name the second part is not specific right it could be uh, you know a plant or animal or uh, even fungus or bacteria can have the same species name so more related means look look at the genus so this first and third are a lot more related because both of these are part of the same genus and have a look you know just uh, uh, refresh your memory about the national animals and plants uh, yes yeah, so the, the flower in the lumbo nucifera while fruit is mangifera indica the mango right tree is uh, uh, the banyan tree bird is uh, of course the, the peafowl land animal is uh, panthera tigris tigris see it has called the trinomen right aquatic animal is uh, platanista gangetica that is a river dolphin and the state animals and plants of punjab because i'm i'm talking to you from punjab but just have a look all this list are the available in the internet so just refresh yourself in um, in punjab our state bird is eastern chanting goshonk right miliarax polyopterus antelope cervicapra that is uh, the black buck is our state animal dalbergia sisu that is indian rosewood is our state tree uh, check out the, the complete list you know uh, saraka soka could be a st uh, it is basically the the state tree in many of the states in india right check it out that list is the for the state flowers and state trees.